Hello guys, welcome to Physical Mythology and welcome to day 73 of 100 days 100 concepts. So today in this video, we'll uh, think of a question regarding precipitation hardening. That why these GP zones and these intermediate precipitates like theta double prime and theta prime are forming. Why are these forming? So this is the question which I want to you know briefly discuss in this video. And again before uh, discussing it, I just want to uh, mention about our live batch which is starting from tomorrow which is December 28th and the last you know the deadline to enroll is 12 p.m. on the same day that is tomorrow right so if someone is interested to join please do check out the link in the description and do enroll right so this is one of the important posts which will boost your confidence with regards to the previous year questions and also this will help you to analyze how the gate questions are going to be framed and going to be uh, coming from you know different important topics and whatnot. So yeah uh, that's it uh, about this thing. So again the deadline 12 pm tomorrow. So please do visit the link in the description. Now coming to the main topic of this day what is this importance why are these gp zones and these intermediate precipitates like theta double prime and theta prime are even forming right so we know right already uh the sequence so initially gp zones form which will convert to theta double prime which then converts to theta prime and finally you get theta equilibrium so this is my equilibrium precipitate okay so let's take uh, alpha to be my solid solution okay and uh, which is nothing but aluminum copper okay and now why not alpha is directly converting to theta equilibrium why this is not happening and why the above sequence this particular sequence is actually seen in the transformation this is called sequential transformation okay so, did you think about why this is happening? So, what are GP zones? GP zones are basically Garner Preston zones, and these are nothing but the clusters of solute atoms. Okay, all the copper atoms will segregate to one region. Okay, just they move and they actually form these zones. These are nothing but the clusters of solute atom. Whereas my theta double prime and theta prime are the intermediate semi coherent precipitates. Okay, so GP zones are completely coherent because no new phase is actually forming. It's just atomic migrations that are taking place. Whereas theta double prime and theta prime are uh, semi-coherent in nature. And theta equilibrium of course is the equilibrium precipitate. So it is completely incoherent precipitate. Okay, so now what is the reason behind it? So let's talk about the thermodynamics of this sequential transformation, right? So basically for any transformation to take place, let's say we have A converting to B. Okay, so what happens? So let's say B is nucleating from A. That is what is happening, right? So we have a supersaturated solid solution after quenching. Then uh, it will try to reject out the excess solute and it is forming these GP zones and uh, this sequence, right? So basically if A is converting into B, we have something like this, right? So we uh, usually see in terms of energy states, right? So let's say this is my A and this is B. Okay, so the free energy states you can see, right? So let's say this is G A and this is G B. Okay, so why A wants to go to B? Because B has less free energy, and we know any transformation which is aiding for minimizing its free energy, then it is spontaneous and it is favorable. Okay, so usually you see something like this, right? Something uh, you know. I think I can draw it like, yeah, something like this you will be observing, right? That means my energy is shifting from GA to GB. And here we have two important terms. One is called as my activation barrier. And two is the free energy change itself. Okay. Or uh, you can say this to be the driving force. What is the driving force? The driving force is to minimize my Gibbs free energy of the whole system, right? That's why it's the driving force. And what is the activation barrier? 
so activation barrier is of two types basically so the major thing which many of us are interested is about the interfacial energy okay and uh, if you are actually considering the misfit strains and all you can also consider strain energy okay which we are not going to you know derive and all here but you must remember that these two will usually be the activation barrier so here coming to the picture again so this is the activation barrier okay which can be taken as gamma plus uh, let me put it this way g plus i mean g epsilon the strain energy okay that is my activation barrier that means in order for the transformation to take place first of all what should happen my energy state from a should overcome this gap over here this barrier right you can see only when it is reaching this then it can come down to a very low energy state right that's what you can see from the picture correct now this will be my driving force which is nothing but my delta g as i said free energy change is the driving force so here in this case it is gb minus gf okay this is my driving force okay so if you also remember uh, the free energy for in nucleation we write it in this way right the volume into delta g so here delta g is nothing but the free energy change per unit volume plus what we write we write area surface area into gamma so gamma here is the interfacial energy and uh, delta g is my driving force okay so here from here you can see this is my of course you can uh, also go with sign so this is my negative and this is positive okay Similarly, you can also add up uh, the strain energy term. So, I will write something like this. Delta G epsilon. Delta G epsilon is the strain energy per unit volume. Okay. So, both these. So, even this guy here is positive. Okay. Because we know the whole system should decrease. That means, my F, the free energy of the whole system should be negative. That's when it is favorable. So, if you remember the graphs that uh, you have, you know studied so we get something like this so we have gamma like this we have delta g something like this and uh, on this addition we have something like this right so this is my r star and this will be my f star okay so i hope you remember uh, the nucleation uh, concept okay from there only i wrote this formula here okay so because this part here is negative that means it is helping for the transformation so this is my driving force these two guys are actually trying to increase the free energy that means this is the barrier that should be overcome that should be uh, you know uh, crossed so that the overall Gibbs energy is negative so this will be taken as my activation barriers okay so i hope uh, you understood about uh, activation barrier and the driving force required for a nucleation of a precipitate coming out now the same curve if you uh, reproduce in terms of alpha converting to this okay so it will be so, so this is my g alpha and somewhere here i have g theta okay theta equilibrium right so here you can see that you have the curve something like this okay so just draw it again yeah something like this okay so here you can see that there is a good amount of driving force driving force is very large right you can see the gap here but one more thing here is that my activation barrier is too large the activation barrier for this particular reaction a single step transformation from alpha to theta equilibrium is very high so what uh, any system will do it will try to see where it is spending less amount of energy that means where it is getting less resistance so what it will do so look, let's say uh, this is my g alpha level okay, this is my g theta level so what uh, my solute atoms will tend to do is okay fine i am having a very high uh, activation barrier in order to directly convert into theta so what i'll choose is here i'll try to take some intermediate steps 
so that it is easy for me okay so if you can consider alpha i mean alpha in the sense of course the gp zones will be there because gp zones is just uh, the cluster formation okay so let me also write this to be my gp zones here okay so alpha here is representing my gp zones okay gp zones converting into direct theta so now if you carefully see your curves will look something like this so what you can see here is even though the driving forces are maybe less but the activation energy here in these intermediate conversions okay so this somewhere here and this somewhere here are less so what it will try to do is it will try to take some intermediate phases okay, which uh, you can consider to be kind of uh, meta stable phases right so what it will do is it will try to choose some phases over there and it will try to convert them because it is easy it is spending less energy over there right it has less resistance less activation barrier over there so this is my gp zones as i said so gp zones try to convert to something called as theta double prime and then theta double prime again chooses some other phase theta dash okay because you know again if you draw uh, from theta double prime to theta the curve will change right it may be something like this again the activation barrier is high okay so what it will try to do is it will try to take the least energy spent system or a least energy spent path okay now uh, what is the final thing that we have we already have theta equilibrium over here okay so this sequential transformation is actually taking place in order to save energy to save the overall energy of the system if at all this step is taking place then you should spend lot of energy so what it is doing it is taking some shortcuts okay so it's like you going to your school okay if you directly go on a highway you may uh, if uh, uh, riding a cycle you may take lots of time and lots of energy so what you will do you will just try to take some gullies street shortcuts so that you can save some energy and reach in less time that is what is happening here so this is a shortcut way of conversion of my alpha to theta right so that is the reason the thermodynamical reason behind all this happening is this okay so that is why you get to see gp zones converted to theta double prime then theta prime and then theta equilibrium okay so all these steps are actually taking place why to save energy okay so you can remember this uh, shortcut example right you going to school so i hope you understood uh, why this is actually taking place in this way right so yeah that's it uh, for this video if you like it please hit the like button and also share with all the gate metallurgy aspirants so in the coming 45 days it's going to be very crucial so i wish you a very uh, best wishes from the team of everything metallurgy so that you can perform very well in g20 2021 and of course we are always there to help so you can join our live batch so do find the link in the description and uh, again reminding you the deadline is 12 pm no more extensions because uh, on several requests we we have postponed from 26 to 28 but it's not going to happen now right so if people are interested please go and check out the link in the description and enroll as soon as possible so yeah that's it uh, from this side meet you tomorrow with one more interesting content thank you guys